How do you load a product to Amazon Seller Central? I'll be covering this basic tutorial on adding a product today. My name is Stephen Pope. I am the founder of MyAmazonGuy.com. And on screen here, this is Seller Central. And I'm gonna assume this is the first time you've ever needed to load a product to Amazon. We're gonna do a very basic tutorial on how to add one. And you first start out inside of Amazon Seller Central, you put your cursor over inventory and you go over to manage inventory. Here, you're gonna see the screen with whatever products are currently loaded listed below. There are two ways to add a product to Amazon. The first and the one we'll cover in detail in this video is by clicking a manual add to product button within the inventory section of Seller Central. The second is to download a template file and upload the template file. The benefit of doing the template file is you get um, a bulk load. So if you're trying to load more than five products today, a template upload may be the better option. But because I'm assuming you're a, a beginner and you've never loaded this before, I recommend you avoid templates for now. Templates are extremely difficult to get right. There's a lot of technical knowledge that you need to understand to do a template upload. So for purposes of this video, we're just gonna cover manual loading of a product. So click on add a product. Here, if you're uh, trying to sell something that somebody else has already listed on Amazon, when you type in a UPC, you're gonna be able to find that product already listed in the Amazon catalog. The majority of people watching this video, however, um, will be using a brand new product. If it's not a brand new product and you type in the UPC and the product comes up, so let's just, let's just roll with whatever item this is, you can just simply hit sell yours and add it to your catalog and you're done. It's really that easy if the product's already loaded in the Amazon catalog. But if we're gonna try and load a brand new product, that means you've got a UPC that when you typed it into this box here, nothing came up, or you know for a fact you need to create a new product listing, go ahead and click new product listing. In here, you can look, look up uh, the classified category where it's gonna be loaded. And there's a lot of different drop downs. can get a little confusing on where to go. So one of the things you could do, so let's say I'm gonna sell a wine glass and you could come in here and search for wine glass. In here you can see, okay, there's some subcategories for the type of wine glasses and you can select the one that you think makes the most sense. Once you do this, you're gonna come to this screen and you have to fill out the red triangle areas, vital info, offer. It's not a lot of data that you have to use to load uh, to get it to take, if you will. So when I type in a UPC like this, gotta, and, and you gotta use the dropdown. So if you don't know what a UPC is, this is a universal barcode number. You can obtain these officially from GS1. That's an organization where you can buy a prefix and a list of hundreds of UPCs. You can also purchase these off eBay to buy retired UPCs, and the majority of Amazon sellers tend to do that. If you're not going into retail and you don't have a barcode already printed on your product, uh, buying UPCs off eBay is typically the way to go. Um, <clears throat> so you've got your product ID here, put that in, put the UPC in, and the next you have to put the product name in. So wine glass, yada, 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 and I'm just gonna put in a fake name here. I'm gonna put my brand name Momster in, Boom, now if you've got variations, let's say you're gonna sell the same product as a t-shirt, you got 10 colors. You can select a color theme variation and fill out some of this information. The majority of you though will not have variations and are just trying to list a single product. So if you need to list a variation, um, you can add the color here and let's say I'm gonna have red, blue, and hit add variations. In here, you're gonna then have specific UPCs for each one of these variations and you're gonna list the color map, the condition, and the price. There are other variation themes you could have, um, like size or multiple packaging, stuff like that, and it's no big deal. The next thing you're gonna do, so, so on the vital info, you've put in your product name, the brand name, that's it. If you've got variations, you'll come in here and do the same thing with the seller SKU number and the product ID. I'm gonna try and cancel out of the variations. Let's see if it's gonna let me. See if I can delete these. And I want to get rid of, continue to edit and select. All right, so I've gotten rid of the variation theme here. And now the UPC shows here instead of on the variations tab. 
The next step is to put in the offer. So if I wanted to sell this for $12.50, then I'm gonna type in my SKU name. If you've never created a SKU naming convention before, I recommend you get a consistent SKU name. One of my favorite ways to do this is to create like a two or three letter acronym for your brand. So in my case, I'm gonna do mom hyphen or not hyphen, but simply the last four digits of the UPC code. So 0716, for example. So I pulled that from this UPC right there. By adding um, that to your seller SKU, you'll keep all of your SKU names straight. I recommend that you create a Google Sheet where you keep all of your product data together and you can document each SKU as it goes about its journey across your platforms because Amazon might be your starting point today, but imagine if you're trying to scale this business at a later point, you're gonna want those SKUs documented and all be um, kept straight. So you can keep this SKU straight and this UPC straight. Um, most of you are gonna be selecting a new condition and you're gonna probably select FBA to ship. So if you're gonna select Amazon will ship, you can just put a quantity of zero there and save and finish. Now, I do recommend that you have inventory images loaded when you first do this, but sometimes, let's say you're manufacturing your good and you don't have images yet, but you wanna create a placeholder for your data, you can do that. And you come in here and, and you, you could load everything except images and save it. This is sufficient to get the item loaded to Amazon. Clearly there's a lot of optimization work that needs to get done on this listing. We haven't really optimized the title, we haven't optimized the description, the bullet points. It's not a finished product by any stretch, but that's the key to get the item loaded into Amazon. Now, for comparison's sake, here's a completed product already live on Amazon. So we've got um, a long title, which typically needs to be close to 200 characters to get all of the SEO juice and keywords you possibly can. Um, you're gonna have, and this one does have some variations. You can see the variations listed throughout here. And then bullet points, um, which describe the product. These bullet points do need to be optimized unique per product if possible, but at the bare minimum, at least optimize bullet point one, unique per SKU, and then the last, the last four bullets could be shared between a category of goods. And then down here, this is called A plus content. We have a lot of videos describing A plus content. Highly recommend you get A plus content loaded to your inventory, but this is not a starting point. This is something that's advanced. And to get A plus content, you do need to have a brand registry, which means you need a trademark on the principal registry. Once you have those things though, um, you could hire an agency such as my Amazon guy, and we do create enhanced brand content for $500. And we've got lots of examples of what these could look like. Um, we're professionals, we set all the keywords, text, images, graphics, you name it, and build it into the listing. So once you have the listing made, your next step is to get images loaded, build out the title, build out the bullets, and then if you do have a trademark, get your trademark registered for brand registry with Amazon, and then go and get some A-plus content built. One of my favorite things about A-plus content is you can link to your other products and show and contrast and compare them, which uh, does definitely increase your potential sales to increase your average order value and crossover sales. So that is a tutorial on loading a product manually. And, and if you have any questions, don't hesitate to leave that question in the comments section. We'll definitely be able to cover it for you. Or if you have another area you're getting um, tied up in. I'm now gonna cover briefly how to download a template file. And again, this is very much on the advanced side. I wouldn't recommend doing this if you've never loaded before. I would probably load, a, you know, probably 50 listings manually before I try and do this by template. But you can come into this section by putting your cursor over inventory, hit add products via upload, and come in here and find the category tree. So if I wanted to sell in wine glasses, I could type that in and see what comes up and select the right one. Um, down here, I've previously downloaded these. I'm gonna go ahead and download this wine glass template right here. And it will previously show all the templates you've downloaded previously. And you can generate template, open it up in an Excel file like this. And in here, enable editing. There are multiple tabs on the bottom which describe the instructions. Be sure to read this thoroughly. They can show you the, the images and what to do or what not to do for best practices. They show an example of inventory that's, that can be loaded successfully where they list the UPC, the product data, and all the columns filled in. Notice how many columns there are. There are quite a few. And each template is custom 
to the category that you're in. They have data definitions for each attribute. So if you're wondering, hey, what does this attribute mean? You should check out tab four for data definitions. For example, the most uh, important row you always fill in, or column that is, is the update delete column. If you're trying to update data at a later point, the item's already loaded to Seller Central, I highly recommend that you do a partial update instead of a full update. If you by chance leave this field blank, you're going to delete part of your catalog, and that's very concerning. So this is, in this particular template, it's in column X, and it's the update delete column. If you leave this blank, it will delete whatever you don't load. So what I mean by that is, if you upload five attributes, but your previous upload had 50 attributes, it'll only update the five, and it will delete out all other 45. But if you type in partial underscore update, it will only update what you load on the sheet. I typically recommend just having partial update in all data uploads from the get-go to avoid any data loss. Um, just in case you ever manually put something in at a later point uh, and you do another data upload. Even for new items, I typically will also mark them as partial update. Similarly, um, with the manual load, you're going to see a list of columns where you can find out um, all the core information you need to list. So the product item um, type will have a drop down. You can select it. You can type in your SKU like we did for the manual load. Um, so I'm just going to type in a fake one here. You can type in your brand name, your item name, wine glass, dog, external product ID, which this is going to be the UPC code. You'll put that in there. The drop down will show you what type of code you're putting in. For most of you, 90% watching, that'll be UPC code. Item type. This is going to be specific to each category file. You can select it from the drop down. Price, what I'm going to sell it at. Quantity, again, if you're loading for FBA, you can put a zero in. And then from here, the images don't have to be loaded by template. But if you're going to do an image by template, one of my favorite ways to do this is to grab the image from the website. So if you've got a website and you've already got it in Shopify or another forum, you can come in here and grab one of this, the image URL link and go ahead and dump that in to the data file in column K. That does make it easy to load images so you don't have to download and re-upload them manually. There are seven image slots. I recommend you have six images loaded with a seventh slot dedicated to a video upload if you have brand registry. I do not recommend loading swatches. I usually think the main image is better than a swatch in most instances. Variations, I have uh, multiple videos dedicated to parentages and variations. I do not recommend that you load um, new products by template via a template file for variations. It's very difficult work. Even if you're trying to do this and you're you know, somewhere between middle, uh, middle and advanced, Variation work in templates is very difficult. It is some of the most advanced things that we do, so I recommend passing on that. The rest of this information is pretty straightforward. You can fill out um, bullet points, descriptions, information, um, and all that good stuff. There's a lot of optional attributes. Basically, everything in green and onward is optional, and you don't have to fill those out. If you just want to get your base template filled out, get the item loaded so you can ship it in Amazon, you've got everything you need to do that. Dimensions, though, I would definitely recommend filling those out because that does affect how much Amazon will charge you to ship your item. You can select what fulfillment method you want, and Amazon, dot, or Amazon underscore NA is definitely the FBA version. Default is merchant fulfilled. If you forget to do any of these things when you load the template, you can always edit them later by going back to Seller Central's inventory page right here and fill out the rest of the information that you missed. Um, so again, if you need any Amazon consulting, you can go over to myamazonguy.com and contact us and we'll be happy to help you out. That's my tutorial on how to load a product manually to Seller Central.